This is the latest report here on September the 13th of 2023. This is not regarding the artificial intelligence declaration that we covered this past week, that it's a little bit of old news. If you want to refer to that, you can always go back to one of my previous videos. There have been two reported issues with KDP that have rolled out today. Actually, it was kind of a little bit, one of the issues I kind of knew about, a little bit behind the scenes, but another one that has actually been a long time in the making. So one of them includes upload limits and the other one includes issues with the new category system. So let's start it out with a very simple uh, one here when it comes to the upload limits. I'd actually gotten some intel from some folks in some various groups that had shared with me that there is now officially a limitation that Amazon is placing on your uploads. So let's go over here to the uh, product page here for, excuse me, the help page for the paperback submission guidelines. By the way, all the links are going to be inside the description down below. You can take a look down there. But officially now, there is a file submission limit to ensure a positive customer experience. We limit the number of books a user can submit for publishing all the same time and within a specific period of time. So for the past few years, there's been an unspoken daily upload limit that uh, KDP reps would share a limit with certain account holders, but they made no statement or changes in guidelines publicly available. So there were people that were submitting like tons and tons and tons of low content books within a given day. And then they were like, no, 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 you can't do that. But there was never any exact number and it doesn't appear to be any exact number. But if you were to look at this particular piece here, you say it says, if you expect to regularly publish a large number of books, please contact us to acquire about an exception. So that is going to go out to those you folks that are doing the low content books that are kind of shoving 10 pounds of crap inside a five pound bag. So um, just know that I don't have an exact number. I've reached out to the KDP reps for an answer if there is an exact limit and I'm waiting on that answer. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stay tuned. So I am currently waiting on the official number from them. So hang in there, subscribe. You'll get the updates as they kind of come out. So let's go ahead into the very next big piece of news that I think every single account holder needs to be aware of. And this includes, of course, the categories. I wanna, of course, mention that Dave Chesson, the Kindlepreneur, posted a video today covering a recent unnoticed change in the category selection process and categories themselves. You'll find links to his brief video covering the category glitch and the updated article on the best practices for category selection going forward. Now, I'll take these items one at a time so we have a clearer understanding of how this affects all account holders and what account holders should do. So on May 30th to 2023, KDP rolled out a new change to the category selection process. Originally the first step of the upload process, account holders selected the BISAC category and left the rest to Amazon to categorize based on what BISAC selection they had and the keywords used. You could then request an additional seven categories up to 10 relevant to your title. Now the change empowered account holders to slip their book into relevant categories, also known as browser paths instead of the BISAC. So it was a little less confusing for people. Now, Amazon still reserves the right to reject selections and recategorize according to the current category selection keywords used. They also limited the category selection to just three, not 10 as previously allowed. Now, account holders could no longer request additional categories and were even barred from changing categories outside their primary marketplace. So when you go into your upload process, you have to select a primary marketplace that's the one you can change the categories. So essentially anything that is outside your primary marketplace, you're letting Amazon decide what categories to use in the different regional marketplaces. So just a heads up, there's no negotiation on this one. I'm sure there might be some outliers and some people might be able to still have requested some of those browse paths, but according to their content guidelines, it's no longer allowable. You can just select inside your primary marketplace when you're doing the upload. Now, many people were okay with this change, while some were concerned this change could adversely affect their listings. Now, Amazon even stated that less is more with category selection, sharing how much more than cat more than three categories was detrimental to algorithmic relevance. In other words, if you were expecting it in 10 categories, it, it wasn't gonna be helping you out one way or the other. Uh, they were saying that essentially three was proven to be the best or less. 
Um, so at any rate, today, the Kindlepreneur Dave Chesson dropped a major bombshell of a discovery. In his video and article, he shared how the categories aren't what they seem. You could be choosing a redundant category or a category that merely doesn't exist. Now, out of respect to Dave, I'll let you check out his full video and article e explanation because he does go into a little bit more details than what I'm going to be able to do here because Dave, I'm telling you, is you know, next level genius when it comes to this stuff, but I'll briefly recap exactly what it was. So number one, category strings, also known as browse paths, break down from the category to the subcategory to the placement. And you can actually find all this information on KDP's category help page. And it actually tells you what the category is, what the subcategory is, and what is the placement. Now, the category is the top level classification, which is a very broad thing like history. The subcategory is a more descriptive classification underneath the category like history than US history and potentially other multiple layers of subcategories. Then a browse path typically ends in a placement, which is where the duplicates are occurring. So the publisher rocket team discovered over half, yeah, over half the categories available to account holders that they're selecting are duplicates. Now, before you freak out, hear me out. Though it seems like that'd be a bad thing, it's actually a great way to get placement across multiple category strings above the bottom placement selection. So this means that you could be choosing, let's say you're getting thrown into the same category inside the same bestseller list of some sort at the very bottom inside the placement. But if you go up into the subcategory or even the category, that might actually change out, meaning that the higher bestseller lists inside that string, inside that browse path are going to be different, placing you in different areas. So this means your book might land in the same placement the category and subcategory are just totally different. And the other issue that Dave and his team discovered is over a quarter of the categories aren't simply there. Dave dubbed these categories as ghost categories because when you go to visit the bestseller list of that category, there's no browse path. It's like it doesn't even exist. If your book is in that ghost category, you can rank, you can't rank for it and you can't get a bestseller tag for it. We could draw the conclusion or theorize that selection diminishes your book chances of discoverability. So in other words, you could probably be putting yourself into a ghost category unknowingly, but you're not going to get any type of rank. Again, it's my theory here, folks, not Dave's that, you know, it decreases the possibility of discoverability. Now, the next interesting part is KDP reserves the right to reject your selection or insert your book into special categories based on your backend keyword selection. So what are the keywords you have to use? Well, it gets tricky because unless you have the right tools, resources, or intuition, it's next to impossible to predict. So what do you do with this information? Sadly, you could keep double checking your categories that you select with what you can find on the Amazon marketplace. Though it'd take a lot of time, you'd eventually get the duplicates and the ghosts identified. And if you're wanting special category placement by KDP, you'll need to keep guessing on keywords until you get the placement from KDP. Naturally, Dave and his team updated Publisher Rocket to identify the duplicate categories and the ghost categories while showcasing potential keywords that could get your book into some special KDP placed category. So there is a silver lining in all this, and it's not terrible news by any stretch, but it does add a level of complexity. I think some of you folks weren't ready to address. So just as a heads up, I am an affiliate for Publisher Rocket. So if you make a purchase to Publisher Rocket, I do get a commission for this. So I wanna say that first and foremost. Do you need Publisher Rocket? No, but will it make your life easier in selecting the right categories now? Yeah, and you get it for a lifetime access at 97 bucks. I bought mine back in 2017. I've got more than my money back. So let's peek here real briefly at what I'm talking about, how they went ahead and unveiled things. So I'm right now inside the category search. So when you come into Publisher Rocket, go into category search, then you can select books, or Kindle. At this point, we're gonna go books. Um, let's try business and money. We'll open up business and money, check it out. And now we can see where there are duplicates, if it's selectable, and if it's a ghost category. So we found already a ghost category. So let's take a look at this ghost category. You could see insufficient data to generate advanced analytics. 
If we wanted to get placed in this category, we could click the keywords over here on this side and they will give you recommendations that will increase the likelihood of your placement in the KDP categories that they slip you into automatically. So um, this is not foolproof, but it is giving you enough data that you can hopefully make a more de informed decision. So again, as you can kind of see, selectable, selectable, you see all these things, duplicate and each of these things are broken down and you can find insights. Let's say for instance, this is a duplicate. I hit insights and when I click this open, it'll give me even more information about this given category. We can even see related categories to this. So if we don't want to be in duplicate categories, we can always find other relevant categories here and find out what is our likelihood of placing in this? What is our likelihood that we are going to be a good fit for this area right here? So it is a lot of information to digest. And I think it's so interesting that last week we talked about artificial intelligence and how KDP is requiring declaration of use there. And they're not saying you can't use AI, um, but either way, people were really, really kind of scared about all this type of stuff. Believe it or not, this probably has far more implications because we didn't know about it. And I think Dave Chesson and the publisher Rocket team have been working tirelessly trying to identify the issue, this glitch inside this new category system. The fact that over half of them are duplicates and nearly a quarter, actually over a quarter of them are ghost categories is very concerning because this means that we could be putting our books into a placement that really doesn't do us any favors whatsoever. So that is all of the information I wanted to share with you folks today. Let's go on over into the live chat so I can find out more details on what you guys and gals think. If you got questions, please put a Q next to your question and I'll do my best to answer. I see there's about 33 of you hanging out over on the main channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And there's about uh, one other person hanging out over inside the podcast channel. I appreciate that there. So hi, Dale, here for all the info. Thank you so much, DL Tillery. I appreciate it. All right, so let's come on over here. Butcher Respawn, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Vincent, thank you so much. Things have been a mess over there for a week. Sales seem to have dropped off, but I think it's a reporting problem. Gotcha, Vincent. All right. I'm back. Time for some party action. Dave C is the man. Agreed. I, I, Mojo, I love making it to these lives. I'm already playing catch up on taking time off. Nice, nice, nice. Mojo, get with me. Um... Wow, this is great. Yes, it is great information. It is not terrible. They're, they're limiting those AI-made books. I don't know that the category things is has anything to do with the AI books. I saw his video earlier. Perfect. Good, good, good. Yes, please, folks, don't just take the information that I've given you because he does a better, deeper dive of the who, what, where, when, and why of the whole category system. So there is a link down below. It would be a great service to Dave, if you could go over, watch his video, drop a comment to him. He would very, very much appreciate it. So this will help out if it's stable. Yeah, yeah. Rachel Morley, hope we're having a wonderful day. I am. Thank you so much. Appreciate the werebears. I see you there. Masiel says, wow, brilliant. Nice. I haven't got that more than money back yet. Um, got you, buddy. It takes some time. Love that Dave C is super. Dave C is super great. Yes, Dave is awesome. I, I love that guy to death. So don't let it get to your head, Dave. Uh, pulling up pub rock. Now I emailed you already. Thank you so much. I appreciate it there. Mojo. You are awesome. Thank you so much. I just changed all the categories with one series this morning. Good, good, good. It's great to see everybody taking a proactive step in the right direction. What I would recommend is figuring out what your current categories are. So go in there and figure that out. Uh, those of you that have the 10 categories you had previously might want to investigate what those categories are. Um, because they might be working against you. Well, I wouldn't say it work. It won't work for you at this point. It's not going to work against you. Um, so just, just as a heads up, you know, it's, it is pretty important information, especially if you are the type of person that's looking to secure a bestseller status tag. So, uh, definitely investigate what categories you currently have yourself in, find out is it a duplicate, which if it's a duplicate, it's not the end of the world. Again, you can get yourself placed into other things above the placement of the category and the subcategory. So that right there, not an issue. But if you're looking to really cast a wider net, 
then potentially you could probably consider going into one of the duplicate categories and finding an additional two categories that doesn't have that overlap. Um, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with choosing the duplicate. And Dave even shares that. Like it's actually could probably be to your favor, but the ghost categories is the most in, you know, concerning aspect of all of this. So, um, all right, I see that we might have a question here. Hey, Dale, Marty over at Ingram Spark. Marty, how you doing, man? It's been a long time. You and I got to get together. I've been chatting up with Ray over there a lot. Any thoughts on how they might be interpreting these categories for folks who opt into KDP distribution, how they convert to BISAC for other retailers? Ooh, man, that's a Dave Chesson question right there. Unfortunately, I don't know what the implications are beyond the Amazon platform. So um, that is a great, great question because obviously what, what uh, Marty's saying is, okay, if I am choosing, for instance, to publish my stuff through my print book, through expanded distribution, um, how is that affecting BISAC selection beyond the platform? Um, and so I don't know. So that's a good Dave Chesson question. By the way, great to hear from you, Marty. Um, Rachel Morley, hey, hey, Butcher's good. Uh, would using Dystopian for Cyberpunk be pointless? It sounds like a duplicate. Um, I don't know. Unfortunately, Butcher, I, I'm not very familiar with the whole Cyberpunk and uh, end of things. Uh, you're going to probably have to dive deep into each one of those categories. Look into Dystopian and see if your Cyberpunk influenced work actually fits in there. Because if you're discovering a Dystopian that has nothing but, let's say, zombie apocalypses or EMP, um, all that type of stuff, but you don't see any Cyberpunk, chances are very likely it's probably not going to be a good fit. So always investigate the category to make sure that you uh, fit appropriately. It might seem appropriate to you, but the audience is always going to vote with their hard-earned money. And if you're not seeing any placement for your type of books in that category, then it might not be relevant. So pulling up Rocket right now, trying to figure out what you're saying and how to make it work for me. Um, again, if it's not very clear for you right now, watch the video from Dave. It's like seven minutes, I think, all together. And then he updated his whole category uh, explanation on his website. Go and read that article, walk through it. I, I, again, out of respect to Dave, I don't want to give all of the goods that he gives because then why would you want to go over and check it out? And I, I just want to make sure that Dave can share this information with you completely uninterrupted. So definitely visit the link down below. I know it's probably like, but Dale, I'm watching you right now. That's fine. If you want to click away and go and watch that, I totally get it. Or you can wait until after I'm done, but uh, all right. Uh, cyberpunk uh, is high tech dystopia. There you go. I remember this being a discussion of the difference between a fantasy romance and a romance fantasy with subgenres. There you go. Uh, do the AI generation changes affect people who publish to Amazon through other means rather than through KDP? Uh, only places that I'm seeing right now are KDP and Kickstarter. So those two avenues are where they're wanting full declaration of use in AI generation. I would imagine other platforms are going to start to fall in line. Um, it's, it's, it's in due time because there is a lot of controversy surrounding the use of AI generation and AI assistance. Uh, there is a distinction between the two of those and even KDP kind of, kind of came out and said it, which kudos to the KDP team for being on top of the whole AI stuff. But um, out of, uh, out of uh, trying to keep with the whole theme of today's broadcast, I'm not going to go too much further into the whole AI implications because I feel like we were pretty exhaustive on the last broadcast with that one. So thank you so much for the question, though, nonetheless there, Sonny. Thanks, Amanda. Awesome. Good stuff. I had some bad categories. Didn't even know it. See, this is why I bring this up. This is why I really wanted to make sure that everybody knew about this information because you probably could have some quote unquote bad categories, probably those ghost categories. So with a quarter of those selections being those ghost categories, it's concerning. Uh, question, is there a KDP sales report glitch that you know of? I know one of my readers bought two paperbacks recently and I don't see them in the sales reports. She says she bought from Amazon. Uh, it won't show up in your sales report until it has shipped. So any print products, they have to wait. Now for eBooks, it's instantaneous. Like you'll, you'll be able to see that inside your report right away. Whereas if say for instance, Cleve, I go and I order your book on Amazon right now, until that product ships, it's not going to show up inside your dashboard. Now, 
there have been some issues with the reports. I think currently that the reports dashboard has a lot of work to do. I don't even bother with it anymore. I go into book report, which is a browser extension to figure out any of those sales because it's just, or I even go into the old report because I will go into the current reports that they have right now and it will just continue to process, process, process until eventually the browser times it out. So, um, just kind of heads up, the reports do tend to act wonky. What I would recommend is go into the old system. You can do that, I think, in the bottom left inside your dashboard. And then uh, you could also use Book Report as the browser extension. It's 100% free up to, I think, like $1,000 or something like that. If you make that per month, you can probably afford to get that upgrade for Book Report. But yeah, take a look in, at Book Report and that will help you kind of figure out what the accurate sales are. And again, if you're running Amazon ads, same thing. Remember, if somebody orders a print book, it could take a while. So sometimes two days could be taking up to a week. It could take two weeks. I don't know. It just depends on fulfillment and how slow they are in that. And when you get into quarter four, it starts to really get crazy. All righty. Well, that is all the information that I have for you guys and gals today. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you've got questions, please fire them right now. Again, if you want to make sure that you're getting ahead of things and you're addressing this category glitch like it should be, one, check the categories that you're placed in from inside your dashboard. You can literally go over, find the browse path, go onto Amazon, see where it's at. If you find that browse path with no issues, great, fantastic. You may not have to change a thing, but if you find a specific browse path or category that it goes to no page whatsoever, there's a list, but there's no browse path on the left, you probably got some issues. In fact, let me just show just a screenshot here really quick of what Dave has in his video. And this is why you guys got to go and watch his video. On the left-hand side is the the ghost category. You could see there is no, there's no browse path whatsoever. Here on a normal one, you see that the browse paths break down. Books, mystery, thriller, and suspense, mystery. And then it breaks down into historical on this one. So you see this one, nothing. This one, something. And so by selecting those ghost categories, you will never get the bestseller tag and you're never really ranking for that because it doesn't exist. And I haven't had the opportunity to reach out to the KDP team to, for an explanation on something like this. So hang in there. When I do find out more details, I'll make sure to get on here with you folks and share even more with you. Uh, I always like to give you guys the accurate information. So that way you're making informed decisions. All right, with that, all that said, and without any further ado, I want to thank each and every single one of you for tuning in. Thank you to all my channel members. You want to join the channel memberships and get exclusive behind the scenes videos, hit the join button down below. There's also a link. All of the sources, all of the things that I've covered in today's video is inside the description. You'll find all the relevant links. Make yourself informed decisions. Don't just put your head in the sand and say, oh, it'll work itself out. You can really be putting yourself at a major disadvantage if you aren't addressing your categories appropriately right now. Till later, this has been Self Publishing with Dale, and I thank each and every single one of you for tuning in today. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Special shout out to my channel members for both the podcast channel and the main channel. Without your support, some projects we do at Self Publishing with Dale would be much harder to fund. If you want to contribute to the cause, visit dalelinks.com slash memberships for details and get your on-screen shout out at the end of each broadcast. Till later, this has been Self Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you 